Hello YouTube, this is Alan Jeremy and today I'll be showing you how to create a health system. So first of all, start by setting the camera to follow the cube and we can do this by parenting the camera to the cube. This is not really necessary but to make our gameplay more realistic, I guess, as much as a cube is not realistic in a game we just make the camera follow the cube wherever it goes so to do this you select the camera first then select the cube second and this means that the cube will be the parent to the camera then press ctrl p to parent and object <coughs> so this means that the cube which is our player is the parent to the camera this this can be thought of in this way the camera is a child to the cube it doesn't really make much sense but this means that the cube determines the motion of the camera now you can think of this in a real life situation whereby if the camera is the child and the cube is the parent then it means the child always follows the parent because the child doesn't know what to do but i guess that's how you can think of it right now so now if you move the cube the camera also moves but if you move the camera the cube doesn't move. In other words, you can move the camera and the motion of the camera won't affect the motion of the cube. For example, if a child does something, the action of the child won't affect the parent. But if a parent does something, the action of the parent will affect the child. So, with that done, now we press Shift D while selecting the cube to duplicate and create our enemy. And we're just going to give this a material enemy and press this two here to make it a separate material so that it doesn't affect this other cube. And change this to red. And delete all these controls and change this property name to enemy so this means that to sense the collision with the enemy the player will check for collision with the property enemy if this is zero And now we need to add a collision sensor and this is going to check if it is colliding with the enemy so colliding with property enemy and type it exactly as it appears here which in my case is all small letters or lowercase letters and Blender is Python oriented, so if you type in incorrectly, for example, put a capital letter or an uppercase letter where it's not supposed to be, then it's going to affect how things work and it won't work. So now we need to add an AND controller and add a property actuator. Change this to add. And the property value is health and we are going to decrement I guess that's an English word we are going to decrement the value of health by one 
every time we come into contact with the enemy. So connect this up. And click on this little button here so that you can see it in the debug properties when you play the game. And make sure this is checked, show debug properties, because you want to see your debug properties so that you can know if things are working okay. So now if I come into contact with the enemy, my health reduces by one. And you can see now eight, seven, six. Oops, our enemy just fell down. But you can see that it's working perfectly. But that's not all for this tutorial. I'll also be showing you how to make our enemy disappear when you come into contact with him because you do not maybe you want this to happen but in my case I do not want to hit the enemy multiple times and have my health reduced multiple times so yeah and I'll go ahead and rename this quickly okay so in this case I want the enemy to disappear when I come into contact with him so duplicate this to create a new enemy so that we have three enemies in this case so when you press P to play they all fall down so the next thing you want to do is While selecting an enemy, add a collision sensor, an hand controller, and a property, no, sorry, a visibility actuator. So, connect this up, and uncheck this property player. Now, since this property doesn't exist, if we play the game right now, it won't work. So, add a game property player. And this is just going to allow the enemy to sense collision with the player. A little tip always name your properties appropriately so that you remember easily. So, here I'll name the sensor <coughs> player sensor sensor and I'll rename this to enemy sensor just makes it easier to understand than health reduce Deployment or whatever you want to name it, then this is how this set of logic bricks works when the enemy has collided with property player, which is in this case our player, the enemy will become invisible, or rather, the enemy will disappear. Now, uh, there are many ways of doing this, but in this case, I'll be showing you how to use the visibility actuator. So, this visible checkbox, I guess, is checked right now, which means the enemy is visible. And we want when the enemy collides with the player, the enemy should be invisible. So, make sure this is unchecked. And when you press P to play right now, you can see that our health reduces by one and the enemy disappears. So first of all, let me delete this and duplicate this because it has all the necessary logic bricks, I guess. And we can scale this plane by 
maybe five. But it's a large playing ground and you can duplicate as many times as you want by pressing shift D or left clicking wherever you want to see your enemies. So now I can go to the camera view and move this up. Now if you press P to play, we can actually move. When we do come into contact with our enemy, our health reduces by one. And that's basically how it works. So this is going to be the end of part one of this tutorial. Oh, sorry. The end of part two of this tutorial. And thank you for watching. And please subscribe, like, and comment. And this is my second time making a tutorial so I still may not be as perfect as most of you may expect me to be so please drop in a comment and tell me how I can improve my tutorials thank you very much for watching and goodbye